Hey everyone, today I'm going to be eating a whole bunch of vegan hot dogs in order to figure out which one I like the best. We'll be grilling them inside and outside on the barbecue to see how they perform. And it's worth noting that before going vegan, I ate hot dogs like nobody's business. And that being said, when it comes to products like these, I think it's important not to expect them to be a one-to-one -one replica of their animal counterparts. I usually try to just enjoy these kinds of things for what they are, and most of these are pretty dang good, but a few of them are the opposite of good. Also, I'll be leaving links for all the dogs mentioned in case you want more info on them. And with that out of the way, let's get to making some dogs. And up first is the Stadium Dogs by Field Roast. Admittedly, these are the ones I buy the most these days. I find that they taste pretty good and have a fairly pleasing texture and a good chew. They don't get dried out like a lot of the vegan dogs I've tried in the past, and my only complaint is that they don't have a snappy casing, but that's okay. And at first I wanted to just try the dogs by themselves, and if they were good, I'll add them to a bun with some mustard. And yeah, like I said, this one is a solid dog in my opinion. Overall indoors, I'd rate it about an 8.4 out of 10. Oh, and for the rating system, basically anything below a 7 means I probably wouldn't buy it again. Now next up is the dog by Very Good Butchers, and I got this at Besties Vegan Paradise here in Los Angeles. They are an all vegan shop and run by some really good folks, so definitely check them out if you're in the neighborhood. So this was my first time trying these out, and I'll go ahead and cook it up over medium heat. And for the most part, I'll be grilling all of these the same way, but as you can see, this one got some nice browning, and I totally forgot to film my first bite, but it was a bit harder to cut into than the stadium dog, but I made it work. And you know what? These are pretty good too. The flavor definitely has a bit of that vital wheat gluten slash seitan flavor, but they are seasoned really well, and the chew overall is really nice as well, and I guess overall I'd give these an 8.1 out of 10. All right, next up is the Uptons, and these ones do have a casing. I kind of think it's similar to what they use on the Beyond and the Impossible sausages. So just cooking it on medium heat and a little bit of oil, as I do, browning each side. And yeah, the casing on these are really great, really snappy. The dog itself was kind of soft, and it didn't have as good of a chew as I would have hoped. It also has that vital wheat gluten taste, which I should note, I'm personally very sensitive to, so it's not my favorite, hence why you don't see me making a lot of seitan on this channel. And these dogs, they were a little bit salty on their own, but once you put it in a bun with some mustard, it's not as noticeable. Overall, I'd give these a 7.5 out of 10. And then next up is Field Gross again with these classic smoked dogs. And this review is brief because this dog was very similar in taste to the Uptons I just tried. It doesn't have a snappy casing, but it's got a firmer chew. So I'd give it a 7.5 as well, since those two things kind of balanced each other out. Okay, now it's time for Yeah Dog, and these are made by a smaller indie company. I got these at Besties as well, and these aren't made with any of the typical kind of binders or ingredients that a lot of the other dogs have. I wanna say up front that I really dug the flavor of these. In fact, flavor-wise, they might have been my favorite, but full transparency, I did have a dickens of a time cooking them. I tried to follow the directions both indoors and outdoors, and I'm sure it's user error, and I'll definitely try them again, but when I cooked them indoors for the first time, they were quite soft still and didn't really have much of a chew, unfortunately. But like I said, flavor-wise, they were great. So I'll definitely be trying them out again. Overall, as is, I'll give them a 7.2 out of 10. Next up are these bee leaf dogs, and visually these look the most like traditional hot dogs to me. I'll cook them up like I do, and unfortunately the looks were deceiving. The chew was all right, but they were quite bland and even had a bit of a strange aftertaste. Overall, I'd give these a 6.5 out of 10. I don't think I would buy these again, unfortunately. And now it's time for Light Life, and I'll admit I've never really liked Light Life. I remember when I first went vegan and I got these dogs and I ate one and I was like, man, this is brutal, but not as brutal as what animals go through for animal-based hot dogs, so I'll take one for the team. And I was prepared to hate these as much, if not more, but surprisingly, they weren't as bad as I remember. Now, don't get me wrong, they were still rubbery and bland, but not nearly as bad as I remember. That being said, uh, I don't know, 6.6 .6 out of 10, no thank you. Okay, now we are going into sausage territory. Yes, I know I said hot dogs, but those were all the hot dogs I could find, so we're doing some sausages, and first up is the one by Very Good Butchers, and these look and cook a lot like the Beyond sausages. They have the same kind of casing and everything. They brown up pretty great, as you can see. Taste test-wise, they have a great chew, but a slightly weird aftertaste. This was mostly masked once I put it in a bun with some mustard, however, and since that's how most people will eat them, I'll give them a 7.5 out of 10. And then next up is the Beyond Sausage, and yeah, these are very similar to the ones I just made. However, they do expel a lot of grease, which is not necessarily a bad thing, and the casing, sometimes it'll melt away and get a little loosey-goosey too. They do brown up quite nice, and in general, it's just a good solid choice, good flavor and chew. I'll give them an 8.2 out of 10. 
And then last up is the Impossible Sausage, and these ones, they leak a lot of grease, and the casing needs work. It doesn't really adhere to the meat, and it's kind of like a loose balloon, to be honest. That being said, the chew and the flavor are pretty outstanding. I think if they can get the casing to cling a bit better to the sausage, it would be a game changer, but as is, I'll give it an 8.4 out of 10. All right, now let's head outside to the barbecue to grill some of these up. And I say some because I honestly wasn't interested in grilling all of them. And one thing that I think helps any vegan dog on the grill is to not only grease up the grill, but to grease up the dogs themselves. So I'll get some oil in this here mug, which I also got at Bessie's, and then we'll throw the dogs on there and give them a good old brushing. And I'm gonna grill up the Field Roast Stadium Dog, the Upton's Dog, the Very Good Butcher Dog, and the Yeah Dog Dog. And like I said, I greased these dogs up, but unfortunately when I went to turn the Yeah Dog, it stuck to the grill. So I had to remove it, but I totally snacked on it. Like I said, they have a ton of flavor, so I wasn't even that bummed out. For the most part, the rest of them grilled up in the same amount of time. And after that, I'm gonna grill up the sausages. And these didn't really need any greasing on account of how fatty they are, and they all cooked up pretty close to each other. I will say the Impossible Sausage casing did a lot better on the grill as it was less like a loose balloon, so that is a bonus. But in general, these all cook fairly similar to an animal-based dog on the grill. These sausages definitely let some juice go, so be careful for flare-ups. And now the taste test, and I went ahead and put them all in buns and dressed them with some mustard and then to annoy at least half of you, I also added some ketchup since I was feeling a little chaotic. And then first up is the stadium dog and it was pretty much the same as inside but maybe a little drier but that's probably because I let them sit out while I cooked the sausages. But this is still a solid choice and I'm giving it an 8.0 for the barbecue. Next up is the Uptins, and I don't think the barbecuing really changed my overall impression. It was pretty much the same as it was indoors, so 7.5 for that one. And then the Very Good Butcher Dog, and for whatever reason, this was mushier and the chew was a little less firm on the barbecue, so I might have to knock it down to 6.8, unfortunately, but perhaps I cooked it incorrectly. I'll have to try it out again. After that, we'll do the Very Good Butcher Sausage, and again, like the Upton's Dog, not much difference on the grill, a little smokier, but also a little drier as well. So we'll go with a 7.5 on that one, and then after that, we're gonna do the Impossible Sausage, and this was definitely better on the barbecue than indoors. The casing was a lot less flabby, and the sausage itself is just really fatty and flavorful. If that's your thing, and since that is my thing, I'll give it an 8.5. And then last but not least, the Beyond Sausage. And again, not a big difference on the grill like most of these. It was a little bit smokier, but a little bit drier as well. Still a great choice. I'd say a 7.8 out of 10. Overall, I dug most of these except the Bee Leaf and the Light Life. Let me know what your favorite vegan hot dog is in the comments. And then check out this video I got right here for some bacon wrapped dogs. And until then, I'll see you all next time.